I, I have no fear of knowing and making the statement that there is no way that color has anything to do with designating the skill, the capability, the desire of an individual. If you have that drive and you have given the opportunity, there's nothing you can't accomplish. I believe that. I was uh, born December the 16th, 1918, in Hiawatha, Kansas. My parents came to Kansas City, Kansas when I was three years old. Graduated from high school in 1936. Oh, let's see, I was drafted into the service in October of 1942. Sent to Leavenworth, Kansas for in introduction, I guess, to the service. Went from there to, I believe it was St. Louis, Missouri, uh, Jefferson Barracks. That lasted just a short period of time. They booked us with clothing and whatnot and shipped one group to Boston, Massachusetts, where I entered the uh, Franklin Institute of Technology, assigned to do topographic drafting. We went from there to uh, Marchfield, California. Stayed in Marchfield for about 90 days, I believe. In the meantime, on the bulletins coming in, there was an opportunity to be a part of the uh, cadet corps for those who felt they had the audacity to think they could fly. Just a blessing as far as I'm concerned, and an opportunity to seem like it was right in front of me. All I had to do was work for it. I submitted it to uh, take the exams I left uh, Marchfield, California, and went from there to Tuskegee, Alabama, having my first experience going south. Quite an experience, too. Colored entrances, black drinking fountains, white drinking fountains, uh, doorways, exit and coming in and going out, black entrance, and walking down the street as you come in contact or pass by a, a person of different color, a Caucasian, uh, you had to get off the, off the sidewalk and let them pass. My first introduction to segregation in the Deep South. Most of our instructors were people of color. Our company commander was a Caucasian, but I don't know that any of the students had any difficulty. But I enjoyed it, I'll say that. I enjoyed the, the lifestyle that I had, the opportunity to fly a plane was something I never dreamed about being able to do. It was a, the latter part of the year of 43 or the early part of 44 when I became a part of the cadet program. And fortunately for me, carrying five stripes, they permitted me to go in as an aviation student. We flew our training missions in a two-wing fixed landing gear PT-17 as a primary trainer. When you complete that satisfactorily, you advance to basic. Lower basic is the first step, and upper basic is the second step. You spend about uh, anywhere from 60 to 90 days in each one of the particular phases of, of training. You advance to uh, your first step with a retractable landing gear, AT-6, uh, two-seater instructor in the back, student in the front. And this was just like something new for me, so. 
but I, I'm gung-ho as far as reading the books, studying the manuals, going out and becoming uh, familiar with what I was supposed to do, and following the rules. That's all it took. Just like driving the car, the more you drive it, the better you drive. I graduated at Class 45C in 1945. We started off with, I think, 45 individuals. We graduated 23. After graduation, we were sent to Walterboro, South Carolina in preparation of being shipped overseas. Throughout the world, throngs of people hail the end of the war in Europe. It is five years and more since Hitler marched into Poland. Years full of suffering and death and sacrifice. Now the war against Germany is won. Uh, when we went to Walterboro, South Carolina, with the idea that we were going to be shipped overseas, and then to find out, even after graduation, all the gunnery training and sh skeet shooting and pistols and that sort of thing as far as on the firing range. And then to be told that there was no need to be shipped overseas and learn that you were more or less excess baggage was quite a disappointment to me. When you get around a group of veterans who served in this war and in that war and they they went on this adventure and they tore up this town or bombed this train or it, you, you feel like you're just a lost cause. You're part of the team, but you sit on the bench all the time, watch all the other do the work. That bothered me and still does. I guess he had the, a lot of excess baggage as far as non the commissioned officers were concerned. So to, in order to try to get rid of some of them, they shipped us to uh, Godman Field, Kentucky. During our stay at Godman Field, Kentucky, you had an opportunity to stay in as a mandatory three years. Well, in my case, I decided that three years was just a little bit more than I'd want to volunteer to stay in. I liked the idea of resuming my obligation of taking care of my parents marrying the young lady to whom I had been engaged for some time, and getting back to the small-time job as a projectionist, providing that job was still available. Drafted off of, off of the job, go in as a, as a civilian, and come out as a commissioned officer, which was quite a successful thing for me, and I consider that a blessing from the good Lord. Uh, and uh, very proud to have been able to have accomplished what I did. So I left the service in November of 1945 and came home and a year after married the young lady to whom I had been engaged. I have known her from the time she was in junior high school she was about uh, 15 years of age then, and I was 21. We dated all that time until September the 18th of 1946 was our marriage date. And uh, she was 21 years of age, and I was almost 27. And to have the uh, opportunity of rearing four sons, and I have seven uh, grandchildren, and four great-grandchildren. Unfortunately, they lost their mother in November the 5th in 1997. Barbara and I were married for 51 years in one month, from September 1946 to November 1997. occupied both in the post office, had my own lawn service, went to uh, Kansas City Art Institute to get my Bachelor of Fine Arts and my Master of Fine Arts degrees, and stayed busy with two jobs for some 30 years. I 
I enjoyed the fact that I was able to do what some people say that a black man is not able to do. He does not have the mechanical, the intellectual skills to do many of the things that are necessary to qualify as a pilot, a bombardier or a navigator. And so many of the people who graduated from Tuskegee and the other training schools proved that to be a false. And whether your face is black, polka dot, striped, or whatnot, it doesn't matter if you have a desire and the blessing of the good Lord to achieve whatever you put up your mind to do.